Alright, what's up YouTube? Mr. M2 here. Getting ready to do this video on the uh, Mayweather versus Cotto, May 5th. And um, first thing that I want to say is, um, you know, I've watched a lot of videos in the past couple of days since this fight's been uh, signed and everything. And I see uh, some people saying, you know, mostly Pacquiao fans saying things like, you know, Mayweather fans can't say this is a good fight because they said that the Cotto Pacquiao rematch was a bad fight, whatever, bad mouthing Cotto, blah, blah, blah. I just want to say a few things about that. You know, when I first found out that it looked like Cotto and Pacquiao were going to fight again at 147 pounds, I said to myself, I mean, you got to be joking. You know, I mean, why on earth would Pacquiao want to fight a guy that he already beat? And not only did he just beat him, but he beat the snot out of the guy, you know? Like, it wasn't even close. You know, where I come from, you know, when I was watching boxing, you know, when I was younger, I mean, if you beat a guy that bad, I mean, there's no point in fighting the guy again. At all. Especially at a weight class that he's not even fighting in. So, I mean, that's the reason why I said that it was just a ridiculous fight to have or to even think about doing. So, now this fight in particular, I do think is a good fight. Because, you know, like the like the saying goes, styles make fights. And I do believe that there are some things about Miguel's Co Miguel Cotto's style that, you know, can uh, help him out in this fight against uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. So, you know, another thing I want to say before I really get started is that uh not a fan of Floyd Mayweather Jr., not a fan of Miguel Cotto. I'm just a boxing fan. I love the sport, love to watch it, and I love to talk boxing, and that's why I'm going to do my prediction on this fight so I don't want to hear anybody leaving comments saying things like oh you're taking sides or whatever so alright enough said with that here we go tail of the tape uh, let's start with Miguel Cotto first 37 and 2 30 knockouts um, you know pretty good record um, a lot of knockouts for you know 39 fights that he's had he's got 30 knockouts so the guy's got some power you know we all know that uh, he's 5 foot 7 uh, six seven inch reach advantage, kind of short arms. Um, orthodox fighter, age thirty one. Although I do believe that he fights in the orthodox stance, I do I do think that he's a lefty naturally. I think he's a left handed guy. He just chooses to fight that way. So I mean, there's a lot of fighters that do do that. But um, so okay, let's go for Mayweather now. Um, forty two and 0, 26 knockouts. Uh, five foot eight, seventy two inch reach. Um, orthodox stance as well, age 34, so I mean, he's getting up there in age now. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird saying that about Floyd. I remember watching him when he was really, really young to say he's 34 now. You know, it's crazy. But, all right, so first guy I'm going to break down is Miguel Cotto. I'm going to go over um, a few of his uh, flaws, weaknesses in the ring that I, uh, that I, that I think um, I see when I see him fight. Is uh, Number one is... You know he's never he's never been a good defensive uh, fighter to me. Uh, he does have holes in his defense, uh, and he's always been a sucker for a right hand. He does get hit with the right hand a lot, um, and that's something that he definitely needs to work on in this fight because we all know that uh, at this point in Floyd's career, he's uh, the bread and butter is that that counter of right hand, that right hand straight down the pipe that he throws. He lands it with you know good authority from time to time on, on his opponents and um, he's gonna have to work on that another thing is that um, you know Cotto at first he was sort of a one-handed fighter to me he was a left-handed guy to me good jab good left hook to the body left hook up top kinda reminds me of Barrera in a way it's Marco Antonio Barrera where he did you know he did a lot of work with the left not so much with the right I do think that he needs to work on the right hand himself um, throwing that more often. It has gotten better over the years. I mean, he did land a lot in his last fight against Margarito, but I mean, you know, who can't land a good punch against Margarito? But it has gotten better. I noticed that it has gotten better, but it needs to, it needs to be, you know, really sharp for this fight. It has to be sharp. Um, a few other things that I noticed that he doesn't do well is that he doesn't, doesn't really like to go to the body as much recently. I, I, I remember back at 140 pounds, he was, he was very good at going to the body with that left hook, but um, 
recently, you know, I haven't seen him do it much. I really wanted to see him do it against uh, Antonio Margarito. I think he could have stopped him if he did, but he chose not to, decided to box and stay on the toes on the outside. He got the win anyway, but, you know, I think he should go to the body, especially in this fight. Um, you know, a few other things. Uh, one, well, actually, not feeling just one more thing that I, I think he really needs for this fight is um, he's got to be um, in tip-top shape for this fight. He has had a history of looking like he tends to fade down the stretch of fights. Um, I mean, it could be the weight. We all know that he was having problems with weight at, you know, from 140 to 147. Um, you know, that could be it. But, you know, really, you got to be in tip-top shape if you're going to go up against a guy like Mayweather. You have to come in and be able to go 12 hard rounds, stick to your game plan the whole fight, and uh, not let up at all. So... Those are a few things that I think he uh, definitely needs to work on for this fight. As far as his strengths, um, Miguel Cotto does have a very good, strong left jab. Um, very good. Um, I'm going to bring up the De La Hoya fight with Mayweather now. And the reason why I do this is because I think that De La Hoya and Cotto, they do have a lot of things in common when it comes to boxing. Um, and one is the left hand. We all knew that Oscar De La Hoya had a very, very good jab. Very good left hook. And if you go back and watch the Mayweather and Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight of a couple of years ago, De La Hoya had good success when he was throwing that jab. I mean, he was popping it out there. We all know he has a good straight, straight left jab, good hard jab. And it did land with regularity against Mayweather when he decided to throw it. And um, if you do notice, um, I think from the fourth round on, Mayweather's eye, his right eye, it did start to get a little swollen. It was starting to puff up on him uh, throughout the fight because of that left jab. It was finding a home. And um, that's something that Cotto has to throw. He has to throw the jab. It can't be every now and then. You know, it's got to be consistent. He's got to pop it out there, and it's got to be with authority most of the time. It's got to stay consistent. Um, that's key for him. He also uh, has shown uh, the ability to box. Um, you know, at first, Miguel Cotto, I thought he was just a brawler, but he can do some boxing. He was on the toes, you know, in recent years. He does move around the ring, uh, throw, stop, you know, throw combinations and get out of there. Shows good head movement from time to time, but not all the time. You know, good boxing IQ. Um, he definitely has very good power in that left hand. He can knock people out. And if he does land flush on Floyd, I do think he can hurt him. He could possibly stop him if he does land a good flush shot. Especially at 154 pounds, you know, we know he's the bigger man, the stronger man. He's also very steady on his feet now at 154 pounds, and his chin is much, much better. Another big key that I think he has in this fight, a big advantage, is um, he's been much more active in the ring than Mayweather has. Um, and he's fought, he's fought some good guys. I mean, Yuri Foreman's a you know, good boxer. I mean, he had problems with the knee, but, you know, Miguel Cotto did his thing. Um, Mayorga, big strong guy, you know, doesn't really bring much to the plate other than just strength and, and punching power. Ended up stopping him as well with the power, and uh, we all know he just outboxed uh, Margarito in his last fight. But um, you know, he uh, he's been more active, and I think that that could be something that could really help him in this fight. Also, one thing he definitely, I think he definitely has to do is be uh, on the toes on that night. He has to box. He has to make Mayweather come to him. I think that that's something that he, he should do and that he can do in there. And he should definitely try that. I really think that could uh, draw some problems for Floyd. Now for Mayweather, um, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that believe he has no weaknesses at all. But, you know, he is a human being. And he can be hit and he can be beat. It's just, you know, he just hasn't been beat yet. So, um... One thing, like I said already, he the the activity of the guy. He hasn't fought a lot recently. I mean, he fought Shane Mosley, and then he took about a year and a half off, and then um, got in the ring with Victor Ortiz and got four rounds in in a controversial knockout. So I mean, you know, I don't think that really did much for him as far as ring rust. You know, I mean, he's gonna have some ring rust with with all this time off. I mean, it's gonna happen. I mean, you can get in the ring, in the gym, you can spar do all those sort of things, I mean, we we know he does, does it a lot, he's a gym rat, but it's different from a real fight, you know, 
very different from the real fight. So he's going to have some ring rust in there. Um, also, like I mentioned with the uh, with the jabs, he's he, he's not good at defending the jab. He does get hit with jabs. I mean, you know, Oscar De La Hoya was one guy who who had success against him. I mean, um, Zab Judah did land some jabs early on in that fight against him. Even if you go all the way back to the Jose Luis, Jose Luis Castillo fight, he had success with the jab as well when he did throw it from time to time. He had a really sneaky, underrated jab, and um, it did get to Mayweather, and it gave him some problems in that fight. That's one thing um, that he definitely has a weakness with, um, and his offense nowadays is, is not what it used to be. I mean, he's never really been an offensive fighter, but you know he's, he's, he's more of a one-punch-at-a-time kind of guy now. He doesn't really throw a lot of flurries, a lot of combinations. He wants to you know, counter punch you and things like that, so, that's another thing there, um, also, he doesn't have a good jab either, he likes to lead with the left hook, I mean, he does throw it out there to, from time to time, but it's more of a flickering thing, you know, it's fast, very fast, but it doesn't have a lot of power, and, um, you know, I think that he, he definitely needs to, needs to use his jab in this fight too, um, and can he be the hunter in this fight, I mean, he, he has hunted people down in the past, but, you know, that's really not his game. He wants to sit back in the pocket, make you miss, make you pay, things like that. Also, I do believe that, um, you know, this jail time thing, you know, it could be could be weighing on his mind. I mean, nobody wants to go to jail, you know. It's not a fun place to be. You know, I don't care who you are, you know, you, you don't want to go to jail. And I think that that could really be something on his mind. Um, will it affect him? I mean, we don't know. We'll find out when the fight comes, but... You know, I definitely do think that that could be something that, that could be on his mind uh, during this fight. As for his strengths, um, we all know the guy's a defensive wizard. Uh, the defense is just great. Um, he's a good counter puncher. Makes you miss, make you pay. Very sharp with his punches as well. Very fast. Sharp, right down the pike. Uh, lands clean. I mean, you notice when he lands, it lands. Everybody sees it. Everybody in the building can see it all the way from the front row to the nosebleed section, standing room only section, you can see those punches landing clean. Very good uh, ring IQ, uh, and he also has the ability to adapt in the ring during the fight. You know, he if, if there's something out there that looks like it's giving him problems, he can adapt to that, and then most of the time he does come out with the win. So, um, that's one thing that he's very, very good at. Also, the conditioning, you know, it's second to none. We all know the guy's in tremendous shape every fight. Um, not gonna get tired. He's not gonna fade. So you know he's got a lot of a lot of good advantages in there in the ring. So one thing I wanna say um, before my prediction is um, you know I think that this is gonna be a very very good fight. I don't think it's gonna be a, a you know a wash of a fight or a bust, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I do think it's gonna be a very interesting fight. Now, now I'm going to go to my prediction. Um, I'm going to take Floyd Mayweather Jr. by decision. I think it's going to be close. I mean, he's probably going to win at least seven, eight rounds, I think, but they're going to be close rounds. I, I do believe that. It's not going to be easy. I think when you, when you look at all the strengths and everything, uh, punching power goes to Cotto, jab goes to Cotto, things, things like that give him problems. Weight, you know, stuff like that. But I do think overall... Um, Mayweather does find a way to pull this one out and um, get the W on May 5th. So, you know, there it is there. I'm going to take Floyd Mayweather by uh, by decision. Close fight, good fight. Um, you know, let me know what you think. By the way, before I go, I um, also want to say uh, rest in peace to uh, Angelo Dundee, great trainer of uh, Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, and, you know, a lot of guys along the way. Uh, lost another legend in the game, so rest in peace to uh, Angelo Dundee. This is Mr. M2 signing off. Let me know what you think.